My name is Frank Blankenship. I am a psychiatric survivor. I have had my human rights violated on numerous occasions by the medical establishment and the psychiatric state. I have been incarcerated in mental hospitals, actually psychiatric prisons, unnecessarily and callously. I have been held in solitary confinement. I have known the inside of mental health facilities in five states of the Union. I have been called many names by psychiatrists and mental health workers. I have been called such names as kisotypal personality, undifferentiated schizophrenic, paranoid schizophrenic, and I have been called schizoaffective. I have been forced, against my will and wishes, to take harmful psychotropic drugs. Those drugs had many bad effects on me and they made me feel miserable. Among the drugs forced on me were Thorazine, Stelazine, Haldol, Navane, Melaril, Molindone, Olanzapine, Loxetane, and Lithium. I have been out of the hospital and drug free for more than 14 years. I am now in a situation where I no longer feel threatened with institutionalization and I doubt anyone would suggest that I be committed. I do not feel people should be treated or more precisely mistreated in the fashion in which I have been mistreated. I stand with those people who support caring alternatives to psychiatric maltreatment of the sort that I have known. I have had many friends in the mental health system that are no longer with us. I want to see an end to this killing. This is why I come before you today. I am a member of the organization Mind Freedom International. I am a member of this organization because Mind Freedom is pro-choice when it comes to psychiatric drugs and anti-force when it comes to psychiatric treatment. Mind Freedom is an organization comprised mainly of psychiatric survivors, mental health consumers, their relatives, friends, and allies. Mind Freedom supports the self-determination and empowerment of people affected by the mental health system. I am working to organize an affiliate of Mind Freedom in the state of Florida. Anybody in the state of Florida who truly cares about whether human rights are upheld and respected in the mental health system should connect with me and work with our organization if at all possible. Mind Freedom is a human rights organization and if there's one thing that I'm really big on, that one thing is human rights. If you have any questions as to what human rights are, pick up a copy of the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. When we refer to life, liberty, and property, or the pursuit of happiness, we are speaking of those rights to which we think all humans should be entitled by virtue of their species. We include among all humans people who have experienced the mental health system firsthand. The neuroleptic drug has come to be seen as the panacea or cure-all of the psychiatric profession. Psychiatrists have become little more than pill pushers and puppets of the pharmaceutical industry. Psychoanalytic approaches involving looking into the interpersonal reasons for human discomfort seem to be on the wane. I am going to be talking about what is wrong with this would-be wonder drug approach to treatment. In the first place, what we've got here is anything but a wonder drug. In the second place, the chemical compounds in these drugs are not benign. These drugs have a potential for doing much damage, and much damage is just what they have wreaked. Iatrogenic, or physician-caused, disease is epidemic in the mental health field. The mainstream media has suppressed reports of the severity and the widespread nature of this epidemic. Etymologically, from the original Greek, a neuroleptic drug is a drug that takes hold of, or seizes control of, the nervous system, the brain. 
You have probably heard the neuroleptic drug referred to as a form of chemical restraint. Prior to being referred to as chemical restraints, the neuroleptic drug was referred to as a chemical lobotomy. This is because doctors found the effects very similar to those produced by radical brain surgery using neuroleptic drugs. The development of these drugs, in fact, helped diminish the use of lobotomies because now you can achieve the same amount of control over your patient without resorting to brain surgery. The original neuroleptic drugs were the phenothiazines, or typical neuroleptic drugs. These drugs include Thorazine, Stelazine, Meloril, Haldol, and Nave. Neuroleptic drugs cause tardive dyskinesia, a progressive neurological movement disorder. People taking these drugs develop TD at a rate of about 5% a year. The effect is cumulative, and so after a few decades on a neuroleptic drug, one's chances of developing TD approach an absolute certainty. The atypical neuroleptic drugs are those neuroleptic drugs developed in the 1990s to have fewer side effects than the original neuroleptic drugs. These drugs include clozapine, Seroquel, Zyprexa, Respiridol, and Abilify. Atypical neuroleptic drugs cause a metabolic syndrome associated with a number of ill health effects, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, pancreatic problems, each of these conditions are potentially fatal. A 16-state study done by the National Association of State Mental Health Program Directors found that people in psychiatric treatment were dying on average 25 years earlier than the general population. Although this high mortality rate has undoubtedly been due to the metabolic syndrome associated with the use of atypical neuroleptic drugs, doctors and mental health workers have diverted attention from their own role in this matter by focusing attention on changing the dietary and smoking habits of patients. Neuroleptic drugs work by blocking dopamine receptors in the brain. These drugs negatively affect areas of the brain associated with movement, emotion, and higher thought processes. Long-term neuroleptic use is known to change brain structure. The frontal lobe, responsible for the highest levels of thought and cognitive function, shrinks, and the basal ganglia grows. The brain on neuroleptic drugs repressing dopamine activity tries to compensate with the addition of more dopamine receptors. The drugs then cause the brain to be super sensitive to dopamine once the drug is withdrawn. Laboratory animals maintained on neuroleptic drugs show brain tissue losses comparable to that of peach bull maintained on neuroleptic drugs although the brain mass loss in humans is often attributed to the progress of the disease. Studies have shown recovery rates for first episode schizophrenia higher in people who have never received neuroleptic drugs than were those rates for people maintained on such drugs for any amount of time. Neuroleptic drugs are addictive and have withdrawal symptoms powerful enough to put a person back in the hospital. Long-term neuroleptic use always results in cognitive decline. For these reasons, it is imperative that we remember the dictum, first do no harm, and that we develop safe, effective, compassionate, and drug-free alternatives to conventional psychiatric practice that relies so heavily on neuroleptic drugs.